soundstage of the digital media classroom here at Wellington High School. Welcome once again to another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes. This morning's show, as always, is brought to you by the Patricia Lindley Center for the Performing Arts, located in the McCormick Middle School, located adjacent to Wellington High School, and also by the Wellington Music Store, located at 117 West Herrick in downtown Wellington. This morning, our student helpers are Tom Logar and Michael Diedrich. This morning, uh, we have the chance to uh, continue our series of uh, exploring uh, people that have graduated from Wellington High School and how Wellington High School, the school district, and the community has actually uh, performed, or shall we say, produced uh, successful American citizens. And with that, we have Mr. Merle Klein. Good morning, sir. Um, he works uh, presently at West Roofing, but he has had a lot of experiences uh, throughout the time since he graduated from Wellington High School in 1978. Um, before we get into what you're actually doing right now, Let's talk about uh, your time at Wellington High School, extracurricular activities that you were involved in, and so on. Okay. Yeah, back in high school, I was uh, involved in the track program. Um, I was a pole vaulter. I did try to do some, uh, some of the uh, relay races and things of that nature, but um, it seemed like the pole vaulting uh, was something that I became very interested in and wanted to uh, get better at. It was just, it was a challenge. It was something that I wanted to uh, try to, uh, you know, be on the top, you know, list of, of people that had done it here at the school. Um, I, I did fairly well. I, I think I jumped at a height of around 12 feet, which is uh, pretty respectable, you know, considering we didn't have much for uh, equipment or, or coaches back in those days. It was kind of one coach did everything, but uh, that, that was what uh, I, my passion was, and that's what I ended up doing. I tried, I tried wrestling in junior high school, and I tried football in uh, freshman, freshman year of high school, and that uh, didn't work out too well. I was a little on the small side back then. So uh, I thought uh, if I was gonna survive through high school, I'd, I'd better move into something that better suited me. So. Uh -huh. Well, uh, you graduated, as we said, in 1978. And uh, presently, he is a successful roofing contractor and salesman uh, with West Roofing. But uh, before we talk about that, I wanna specifically talk about the fact that, of course, JVS was going on uh, when you were uh, right. in high school, but you decided not to go through JVS. Yeah, um, you know, I don't know what the process is, is today to, you know, to, to, to move from the high school to the vocational program, but uh, back then there was, you know, there were opportunities, there were only so many opportunities per class per school. I don't know if that's still the same or not. But, uh, and so we were, we were told to pick three things that we thought we might want to do, and uh, I picked carpentry, I think, first, and then, uh, um, I don't remember what the second one was, but then brick, brick laying or masonry was, was the last one. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get selected for any of those programs. I got selected for my third choice, and uh, I thought, well, I, I, that was my third choice. It was something that uh, I really didn't have any you know, passion to do. So I decided just to finish my education at the high school and then move on to see what was gonna be available after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you obviously went into the vocational field. Um, what made you decide to, to uh, be coming, you know, going on to a vocational situation versus going on to college and something else? Uh, my father was uh, self-employed. He had his, his own business. It was a family business. My grandfather started and my uncle and my father purchased the business. And then uh, uh, back back in uh, you know those days, we'll say, um, that's when the energy crisis hit, the big energy crisis. And then there was a, a terrible turndown in the economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, jobs suffered, businesses suffered. And uh, unfortunately, my you know the family business kind of you know went away mm -hmm. and uh, so I was I was forced to have to go uh, you know to find a job and to, to make a living and uh, I, I did briefly find some work in the machine trades but again because of the uh, uh, the economy uh, the, the, the uh, steel mill had laid off almost all their employees mm -hmm. Fisher Guide closed in Elyria mm -hmm. and a lot of the local businesses fed those businesses and mm -hmm. And uh, so there was, uh, I was, I was laid off and didn't have any work. And so just through a friend who introduced me to his brother that owned this roofing company, mm -hmm. that's how, that's simply how I became a roofer. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, well, uh, a very successful uh, roofing contractor, as I said, salesman, uh, working currently for uh, West Roofing in uh, LaGrange. And uh, so if you could take that from say the uh, 1983 timeframe where the economy really did go bad, and I do remember that, um, during that particular time frame, all the way up to present time, if you could chronicle what you've actually done 
uh, and all the different jobs and uh, working as a contractor, working as a salesman and so on, what you've actually done from 83 all the way up to present time. Okay, um, in 83, uh, again, my friend uh, introduced me to his brother and uh, he, had, he was uh, the president and owner of the, of the roofing company and they needed a uh, individual to help for a weekend project one day's work <laughs> and uh, so I, I went uh, you know to their office and their shop and um, they put me in a vehicle and they took me to Lake Catholic High School and mentor mm -hmm. and uh, they set me up on a roof and they said all these windows these skylights in this school have to be cleaned there was okay. roofing material that got on the, on oh, the okay. windows uh -huh. and so they uh, they took the ladder down and said goodbye and left me on the roof <laughs> and uh, with a lunch and a little bit of water and I cleaned the windows uh -huh. and uh, um, uh, again, I, I had been unemployed for almost a year at this point, and mm -hmm. uh, so I needed any kind of work and income that I could get. And because I did as good a job as I did, they encouraged me to come back. And there was there was a three day project they needed help with after that, mm -hmm. then a week or a week or two long project. After that, that was actually at the uh, uh, Plumbrook, the NASA Plumbrook facility in Sandusky. Okay. And uh, so we worked over there on a, on a uh, mothballed nuclear reactor for the first couple weeks. And uh, so I spent six years in the actual field installing roofing. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I had the personality that was, I was curious, I wanted to learn, I wanted to grow. And so I wasn't, you know, I, I, they did a specific type of roofing and uh, they wanted to broaden their markets. And so they, they uh, uh, decided to begin to install other types of roofing systems. So I was the person that, you know, was curious enough to say, hey, I'll do it, I'll mm -hmm. try it, I'll, I wanna learn that. Mm -hmm. And so I learned, you know, I went from spray foam systems to modified systems to, to membrane roof systems. And I, I went through that in that six year period of time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on one snowy February night, I got a phone call from the owner and he said, I need you to, you know, come into my office. Um, you know, a couple of key guys have just quit. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, his, uh, his actual field supervisor who ran all the work, scheduled all the crews, he quit. Mm -hmm. And his, his, his uh, uh, salesperson quit. He, he, did, he sold with, the, with his sales, his mm -hmm. one sales guy. Mm -hmm. So this guy quit. And uh, he said, uh, um, he, he frankly, you know, this was, a, I believe it was a Sunday night, about mm -hmm. six or seven o'clock at night. He said, I said, okay, I'll see you tomorrow morning. He said, no, you'll, you'll, you'll come That's right nice. now. <laughs> yeah, you're coming tonight. And so I did, and then he laid this out before me, and he said, look, uh, these guys quit. I think you've got what it takes to, to, you know, to, uh, to sell and, mm -hmm. and to help build this company. So starting tomorrow, you're my new salesman. And I looked at him, and I said, well, that's really nice. I, you know, I appreciate that, but you know, I was, uh, I can't remember how old I was at that time, maybe 29, uh -huh. you know, 29 or 30. Mm -hmm. I wasn't done being a kind of a wild young guy yet, and, and he looked at me and said, you don't understand. If you don't show up here tomorrow with a tie on, you don't work here anymore. Okay. So that is how I became, you know, a, a, you know, a salesperson, and then, uh, uh, you know, again, the company grew. We had, uh, you know, opportunities. We uh, we partnered with companies like Dow Corning and General Electric. And believe it or not, those two companies actually make roof systems, or they did. They no longer do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, you know, we, uh, you know, began to grow as a company. You know, when I started, we were doing, you know. Medium, small to medium sized roofs, we were getting larger opportunities. Uh, we, we began to travel outside of this geographic area and find larger projects. We built uh, a really good market in Chicago. And we did a lot of work out there in Chicago, a lot of work in Detroit. Um, so those were kind of two areas that we, that we grew into. And uh, we, you know, companies were large companies. Uh, we actually worked for BASF, we worked for Dow Chemical, mm -hmm. Dow Corning, mm -hmm. uh, you know, big companies and, every, and everything in between, you know, the mom and pop stores and what have you. And uh, so uh, again, it began to grow and grow and grow. And I want to say in 1996 it was, it was either 96 or 97, our, our company won a bid to install the largest single um, uh, spray foam roofing project ever undertook at the time. Mm -hmm. It was 1.1 uh, million square feet in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the dollars of the project, but it was huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a, a big turning point for the company. That we became recognized and then greater, you know, bigger and greater opportunities, um, you know, came across after that. But uh, part of what I did personally, um, I, I worked with a lot of local school systems, um, Oberlin City Schools. Uh, we did some work for Firelands, uh, Keystone, um, Sandusky, uh, 
Edison schools, um, Green Local Schools, uh, you know, it, it goes on and on and on, and those are all accounts that I managed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I picked up um, some of the customers that the original <clears throat> salesperson had developed, mm -hmm. and uh, when I left West Roofing, actually I left West Roofing two years ago, okay. and I currently work for 5K Commercial Roofing Systems, mm -hmm. but when I left, um, I had uh, I had like five or six accounts that were some of the very first customers that West Roofing Systems ever uh, you know, had purchased roofs mm -hmm. from. Well, it, it certainly sounds like for the last 42 years you've had a very interesting uh, life, I guess is the right word to use. Um, I just have one more question about that. You said that uh, you showed up on a snowy Sunday evening in February and you know you had to all show up Monday with a tie. You had no salesman experience whatsoever. Zero. Did you ever think that when you were in high school that you would become a salesman or were you even the least bit interested in it? Absolutely, Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I, I had no interest at all. I wanted to work with my hands. You know, I just, I wanted to be outside. I, you know, I just, uh, you know, there, there was absolutely no professional, we'll call it professional or, right. or you know, collared, uh, you know, job in my right. future. But right. uh, it, it grew on me and I, I you know, the, after the first week, I wanted to run so far and so fast. I, I you know, it was it was scary. Um, I was like, I, I am not made for this. Mm -hmm. But I sold my first job. Mm -hmm. It was a five thousand dollar job, and the uh, the rush that came yeah, right. with that was incredible. Uh -huh. uh, it only lasted for about thirty two seconds, but you know, because it, it, you know, in in you know, most of everything you do, you know, it's don't tell me what you did, tell me what you're going to do, and uh, so I knew that uh, I finally got there. I finally convinced somebody. You know, to uh, give me their money, mm -hmm. which is a which is a big deal, and uh, you know, I uh, I realized it was something that I that I really wanted to do, and mm -hmm. I, I developed a passion for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, it certainly sounds like you've had a very interesting forty-two year career. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about some specifics having to do with the career that he's had for the last forty-two years. Uh, and he's actually won some awards and been going, uh, as he's, he's, he already told you about how he's traveled throughout the United States, he's actually traveled throughout the world. And we'll talk about that after this break. This is Dialogue with the Dukes. Does your instrument all of a sudden stop working properly? Fear not, Wellington Music is here. This tr my trumpet isn't uh, working. It seems to be, uh, well, not, it's not playing. I can fix this. Give me about a half an hour and I think you'll see a totally different trumpet. With a wide selection of guitars, such as classic acoustic, electric guitars, and amps in much variety. We also have a variety of band instruments and keyboards for your pleasure. Cool, I hope you're happy. Thank you, Wellington Music. Come down to Wellington Music today. We hope that if you have anything that you need in the music category, we hope that you contact or go visit uh, Wellington Music Store located at 117 West Herrick here in downtown Wellington. We're talking with Mr. Merle Klein, who was, as I said, a 1978 graduate from, graduate from Wellington High School, and uh, all of the things that he's done to become a very successful roofing contractor and also salesman uh, over the past 42 years. But now we want to talk about some specific things. We talked about how he's traveled all over the United States and done jobs uh, a lot in Chicago, as he talked about. But also, he has traveled actually throughout the world. And in 2008 to 2009, he was actually involved in the Iraqi freedom uh, situation that was going on in Iraq. And we need to talk about all of your experiences over in Iraq and what you were doing there. Okay, um, so uh, in, in uh, I believe it was late 2007, early 2008, uh, you know, our company was approached, uh, was selected as one of three contractors that would uh, qualify to bid uh, installing spray foam roofing materials on, uh, on um, tents and other temporary structures in Iraq on, on a number of, uh, uh, of what they call uh, forward operating bases or mm -hmm. FOBs. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it was like a six month process for the vetting and the bidding situation and, and we were selected for the work, which was amazing. We had to uh, uh, do some training down in Fort Benning uh, before we went over to Iraq. And uh, so all our guys went down there and we trained. And uh, that first year we had 27 employees go over there mm -hmm. as part of that uh, program. And uh, everybody went over and they stayed in Kuwait for a while. And then from Kuwait they were, they were uh, moved into uh, 
um, the uh, Offal Palace, um, which was one of Saddam Hussein's uh, uh, primary residences. Um, it's right there outside of Baghdad. And uh, so uh, we were all shipped into there. And uh, um, actually, um, the, the program was sort of um, kind of scattered, you know, once we got over there. There weren't a lot of people that were, um, you know, that were familiar with what was going on and, and, and uh, were like, what are you guys doing here and why are you in our way kind of mm -hmm. thing. But uh, we eventually got uh, traction, and we they shipped us off from Off Off Palace to a uh, to a big camp, a big uh, I believe it was a Marine camp um, called Al Takadam, and we began after about a week or ten days of sitting there, um, we began work on the project, mm -hmm. and uh, we sprayed this spray foam material, which is a, a two component liquid that goes you spray it on, and uh, it expands and hardens in uh, literally in a minute, mm -hmm. and uh, what we were able to do was was take these, these tents and these structures that were very temporary, and we made them rigid structures, which are actually, if maintained, they can they can be considered a permanent rigid structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the work was clean these these surfaces and clean these buildings up, remove what they call force protection, which is which is like sandbags and things like that <clears throat> that prevent you know like rock if you have an incoming rock right. or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, and we sprayed these materials on there. We we moved from twenty one over 21 different bases, uh, bases. We split up into two separate teams. Uh, we, we set you know, two separate groups. We set six teams in one direction, four teams in another direction. I went with the four teams. And, uh, and you know, so these guys went off and they were doing big installations. They went from Al to uh, another palace property of, of uh, Saddam Hussein that the, the military had taken over and set up a base there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, was, it was a pretty neat uh, situation. Nothing like your first experience when you come off of uh, a uh, plane or whatever. At, you know, usually, you know, anywhere from midnight to one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, you step off of that plane and you are blasted in the face with what seems like a, a hair dryer. You know, <laughs> it's like a hair dryer sticks that right in your face. Uh -huh. And uh, you know the heat is just oppressive, and uh, you know it really it really was a process to get used to that. But once you did, uh, everything was fine, and uh, we worked a lot of physical labor, and uh, we worked from early in the morning until uh, maybe eleven o'clock in the morning. We would take a two to three hour siesta, sure. mm -hmm. and then we worked until the until the end of right. the day. Um, we've seen a lot of a lot of cool things. Um, I actually uh, got to drive across the Tigris River. Um, and uh, we were on a, a base um, in uh, what is you know known as the ancient city of Ur. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with that, but I'm that, personally I'm not. Believe familiar. it or not, that's where they say Abraham is from. Abraham okay. From okay. The, from the Bible is from, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so there is absolutely nothing there now anymore because, because the, uh, the the, the at that point it's, it's the Euphrates River, and that river, river continues to lose its course, mm -hmm. so, so it, it can move as many as twenty or thirty miles, you know, depending on you know. Let's come down, down and sure. it opens up the Delta River, it opens up the Delta. And, uh, and, and so, uh, but the cool thing that we saw is there's a little ziggurat, they called it the ziggurat uh, temple. And it had been mostly reconstructed, and it was, I believe it was one of seven that uh, exists today in, in, in that uh, area of the world. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was pretty neat. It was, uh, uh, we also got to go down and see some, some tombs that they had found there, uh, ancient uh, pharaohs or kings or whatever. And uh, so, uh, I mean, our experiences were very, we met a lot of great people, a lot of great soldiers. Um, we had, we had some exciting events happen, some, some tragic and terrible events happened. None of our people got hurt, but, you know, it, it was a war zone and people were getting hurt. And uh, so, uh, but uh, overall, um, it was an extremely successful mission. It was considered by the military people that we were dealing with it, one of the most successful uh, construction uh, projects ever performed in a war zone during a war. Mm. Um, the whole the whole premise of the program was to reduce the amount of uh, uh, diesel fuel that was being shipped on the most dangerous roads in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything there was uh, all the power on all these massive bases, and I'm That's talking okay. some, some of these bases you could drive for 45, 45 minutes, minutes on maybe base. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, all, all everything there. there all the power that support all that was generating power from giant generators mm -hmm. that were burning up as much diesel fuel as they could haul in there. Mm -hmm. So, so the, whole the whole idea was reduce the amount of diesel fuel, fuel, save money, mm -hmm. keep, keep these guys, guys off the road, save losses, save losses. 
and, and uh, it, was it was incredibly, incredibly successful. successful. They uh, they, they guessed, guessed that uh, it was a hundred and thirty million dollar project overall, and, and they guessed that it paid for itself about a year and a half. And just the same things all over the place, and then you know there was no, no, no way to quantify, you know, the uh, um, the other benefits of it. You know, certainly people would uh, drive the trucks on they just rode them and that. But but I was very proud of that, and uh, my service I started out just. As, as one of the you know one of the guys who's going to be doing the installations, but um, after, after the team split, they became the, 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 the assistant project manager with a smaller team, small team. Mm -hmm. and uh, the, 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 the larger, larger team, team went to big bases and they did big things. things. Our smaller, Our smaller team went to small, small, lot of small, small bases and, and did a lot of small, small projects. projects. But, but uh, uh, it was it was really rewarding. The soldiers were just you know so gracious, and we we traveled by helicopter at night, we convoy at night. And, and we hit a base, these guys, guys were up, and they were saying, how can we help, how can we help, how can we help. You know, the, the one base was on, the only improvement that had been made to that base since the day it was built, mm -hmm. was, it was a month before, before we got there, they got more costs. <laughs> 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 and, 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 and that, that could be a big thing. thing. Yeah, 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 and, 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 and it really was. was yeah, yeah. It consisted of the other Yeah. So they were very excited to have us there, and it was just kind of comical. You know, we, we got in late, late. We, you know, we slept late. late. We, we went to work the next day, day. and, and uh, we, we uh, started, started on the officers' course. course. There, there, there was, you know, know uh, there, there, there was, was a lot of extra, extra work, work to do on, like, like the, uh, you know, just, just the, the, the officers, stuff, stuff, the regular GIs and stuff. stuff. A lot, a lot of work, work to do there to get those ready. ready. And, and uh, there was less work, work to do to get their stuff ready. And we insulated those buildings. And at night, with, with, Generator running, running and, and four, four giant, giant, you know, you know five, five or ten, ten, ten air conditioning units. Air, air, air you know, providing cool, cool air, air at ten. ten. Right, right. We're still, still 105 five degrees, degrees that night. night. You know, 105 five 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 at night, 125 at night. These guys came out of those tents in the morning in sweatpants, hooded sweatshirts, pulled down over their heads, saying, my God, it is freezing here. So, you know, that was really good. They had hats and you know, set all the air conditioning, mm -hmm. uh, it, it took, took pressure, pressure off, those, off that equipment. Mm -hmm. When something breaks over there, there don't fix it, it, throw it in a hole somewhere, and put it in another. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what that did was, was it just, you know, the whole world, the whole, whole world world process, process was, was a great, great thing. thing. We, uh, yeah. we made we people, people comfortable, they were able to rest, recover, and, you know, we were recognized by many different, you know, groups while we were over there, they were very thankful, and we got some small smoke rewards from them. Different, different places. places. And, uh, one, thing one thing I'm very, very proud of is, is uh, we received an actual, actual company, company called Pink Coin. And, and you and don't you get, get those easily. Mm -hmm. Those are something that are very, uh, you know, held close to the vest. And, and, you know, basically the company gets together and says, you know, um, you know do we want to give this right. or not? And right. uh, we were, we were uh, honored to be mm -hmm. presented with, with one of their company coins. So mm -hmm. that was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Overall, wonderful experience. Um, I think I probably would do something like that again if I had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly sounds like uh, it's something that you're going that experience you're going to remember, you know, throughout your entire life. Uh, it certainly sounds very, very interesting. Well, we're going to fast forward a little bit to 2013, mm -hmm. and uh, you had a special award in 2013. If you could talk about that. Yes. Um, so, and let's see, 2013, six year, six years prior to uh, to that. I was uh, contacted by an architect from Chagrin Falls, and uh, he uh, uh, brought me up to speed on the project that he'd been working on to renovate some old apartment buildings up in Cleveland mm -hmm. uh, at the, like the corner of West 101st and uh, West Avenue. Um, these apartment buildings were unique in that they were uh, something that was typically built. Uh, it was like the company store kind of mentality. So. Mm -hmm. This family immigrated over to the United States and they, they tried different businesses, but they ended up uh, becoming successful in, in, in brewing beer. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were one of the first breweries in, in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And uh, that company grew and became very large. And then they, they also invested into other things and I don't really remember what they were. But, uh, and, and so what they did was is they basically built these unique style apartment buildings that were basically like a row house. And they went from uh, Detroit Avenue, the one property went from Detroit Avenue all the way to Madison Avenue. And it was just a long, narrow, you know, uh, series of apartment buildings mm -hmm. that uh, um, 
you know, were built uniquely in Cleveland, Detroit, and Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the properties had been either partially or mostly destroyed over the years they were built in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. And uh, but these properties were some of the largest intact remaining properties of this of this type. And uh, it took literally six years from when I first met this architect mm -hmm. to go through a you know a process of uh, you know finally receiving the contract to do the work in 2013. And in that process, there were there were community representatives from Cleveland, uh, council, Cleveland council members. There were uh, uh, Congress uh, men and women who were who were part of that, uh, and they, they came together and they created you know they you know a historical registry and you know certain grants and things like that were were brought to bear in this property. When I first looked at it, um, I gave them an estimate of just over six hundred thousand dollars to do the work. When we mm -hmm. finally received the contract in two thousand and thirteen, it was. Four million dollars worth of work because it, it you know everything as, as all these different uh, grants and things came in uh, from a historical perspective they were able to do different things than other than just let's keep this thing dry and safe let's let's try to restore it and things of that nature so it was a it was a complete uh, you know uh, re you know renewal process of the entire property mm -hmm. in the spirit of how it was originally designed. Right, right. And uh, so we installed the roofing system. It was very, it was successful, very successful installation. installation. It was, it was uh, uh, you know, the old roofing had to be completely removed, removed down to the decking, and decking had to be repaired. repaired. The old roofing had asbestos in it, in it. So, that, so that it was an asbestos in the project. You know, we had a special process with the asbestos. You had to cut it, and cruise it, and cleaning it. Everybody had to wear the protective clothing, the respirators, and the whole nine yards. And then, we, and then uh, we, uh, we, we, we got, got the got roof installed, installed. We, did, we, did, we finished, finished the schedule. schedule. Um, um, the, uh, the, uh, the customer bears 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 at the end, At the of, the end year, of the year, the trade, the trade association, association that we belong to has a convention, has a convention and, uh, and so I submit the information, information to them to on them this project, project. Starting, starting with the story of how, how the family immigrated, and that and property, property remained in the family, 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 you know, from you know, grandfather, from great grandfather, 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 son, 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 they, they have they have different work categories, but this was this was the over one hundred thousand dollars square foot uh, project. project. So we so we wanted the, the quality of the work for, for that for that particular project. project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds, Sounds fantastic. fantastic. Well, well uh, at this time, uh, time at this I'd like, like to have, have, you, have you shall we say talk a little bit to the high school students here in Wellington High School. And the first thing is is. You chose, you chose, even though you started out the family business, business uh, in the cycling, uh, due, uh, due to, to the circumstances, you had to change, change kind of change the route, route, route of, of thought in your career. career. Um, so, um, so talk, talk about, about if you could, could uh, talk, uh, about talk about how you should you choose, choose a career, career that interests interest you. you. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's most the most important thing. thing. And, and uh, if, you, if, you, if, you if you don't, don't you're not interested, interested in it, you're not passionate about, about it, it's not something, something you're curious, curious about. about. Um, um, you, you, you really it really has to be something more, more than status, status or, or, or I would say I would money, say money that, 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 that should motivate you when you look for a career. It's it's very very important, you know, to find find something you have passion for. That's what I would say to anything. Uh, and, uh, and believe it or not, I didn't, I didn't know that I would have that kind that of kind passion. passion. But I, but, but, I, but I do. I do. And, and uh, uh, you know, me, me personally, personally um, it became, became a, a became a, a, a an opportunity, an opportunity to, serve to serve for me. For me, uh, uh, you know, you go you into, go into situations, situations, and, and, and sometimes, sometimes you got to create a solution for a problem that maybe the owner, you know, struggles struggling to be able to pay for, you know, be able to afford, be able to keep his business business open, and being able to work. Work things, things you know, you know, together, together to make, make that work, that work uh, you know, for, you know, the, for owner the owner is, uh, is incredibly, incredibly rewarding. rewarding. Um, um, and again, again, uh, yeah, some of the some hardest, hardest uh, sales, uh, sales I ever made, made were, were the most, the most uh, fulfilling, fulfilling. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they weren't necessarily large, large projects, projects, small, small projects. projects. But, uh, but uh, believe in what, what you do, learn everything you can about what you know you want to represent. And remember, remember one thing, one thing I, learned, I learned, you know, early, you know, early on, on is nothing, nothing happens, happens unless you have to say. Hmm. You, can mm -hmm. have, you can have the, the greatest, greatest factory, factory, you can have the greatest TV 
Come on, show us. Show us. Yeah, the best employees. employees. But if they don't have anything to do, you don't have anything. Uh, so everything everything happens when you have a sale. From mm -hmm. there, you have all kinds of different opportunities. Well, in choosing a career, I guess uh, one of the things that you have to decide uh, is what to do and what not to do. What's the best way to figure out what to do and what not to do? Well, again, uh, you, you know, the, the most important thing is tell the truth. Um, you don't want to mislead anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know the answer, don't guess. Um, you know, find out the answer. Um, tell the customer if right. they don't want to hear it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know I don't what the answer to that situation is. I'll find out and I'll get back to you. And then remember, and then remember that, that information. information but, uh, but, uh, you know, continually, you continually look to look to what you do, how you do it, take advantage of all the so many things out there. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, with seminars, uh, seminars, and webinars, and, webinars, and you know, uh, you know, just uh, looking, just looking up things up things on, on YouTube. On YouTube. Uh, we, were, we were we have a we have a scuffle uh, scuffle on the wall, and the, uh, and the uh, employee uh, that, uh, that uh, I designated to do that work work had never done it before, mm -hmm. and he was and he was nervous about it. And I said, Hey, let's look up on YouTube. Let's look it up. And there was there was right two three simple simple easy and easy. You got the work got the work done. Fine. So just take just take advantage of all that and and just continue to grow yourself. Continue to continue your brand. Your brand. Um, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no, very very direct and and honest person. Person that's going that's going to come up with a good sound solution. For, for an issue, and uh, I, I take pride in that. So mm -hmm. that's what I would uh, recommend that these kids to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, the fact that you were talking about uh, telling the truth all the time and being direct mm -hmm. uh, certainly can take you an awful long way, as it has taken Mr. Klein an awfully long way. Well, we'd like to thank Mr. Merle Klein for coming in and talking to us about uh, his success as a roofing contractor and also a salesman and what has taken place for the last 42 years since he graduated from Wellington High School. We'll be back again next week with another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes.